totally relax your arm. Excellent. Okay. And one, two, three. The ideal vaccine actually would be a single dose vaccine that you can give to anyone anytime and it leads to lifelong protection. That's what the Human Vaccines Project is after. And part of the problem of designing these vaccines have been that we don't really understand the immunology behind it and how the immune system fights off these infections. We don't know exactly, for most of them, how they work. And for almost none of them do we know why they work. In this demonstration project, we're using the hepatitis B vaccine to understand the immune response to, to vaccines. And the reason we're using this is because it's a fantastic vaccine. It protects everyone, almost everyone, after three doses. We know that antibody is what you need to protect you. But after one dose, only one third of people respond to the vaccine. Contrasting before and after in the same individual allows us to see what has changed. Then contrasting between people that have had a protective response with those that didn't have a protective response will allow us to see that difference. And that's the simple arithmetic right there. So in this demonstration project, we're actually only recruiting 10 healthy people to examine this immune response. And that may seem like a relatively small number and you may think that there's no way we're going to have an answer after just 10 people. But actually part of the doing the demonstration project is that no one has looked before in this level of detail at the immune response to a vaccine. For us to actually assume that we know what we're looking for um, is taking a big leap. A smarter way would be to say that we don't know what we're looking for right now and therefore try to capture all the signals that might be associated with the beneficial um, response to a vaccine, which is protection. We're going to be looking at the DNA or the genome, something called the epigenome, which is other ways in which the DNA w is regulated, the gene expression, so which genes are switched on or switched off after vaccination, and then which proteins are made after vaccination, all the way down to something called metabolites or small molecules that are made after vaccination. And we also, um, in an exploratory way at this point, are looking at the changes in the microbiome, that's bacteria, fungi and viruses living on and in us. They all live on and in us anyways. And it's increasingly recognized how important they are in shaping our, not just immune response, but other physiological systems. And combining all of these different aspects together has never been done before in a vaccine study in humans. In the past, we use blood because that's a much easier sample to get at and we think that gives us a good idea of what's happening with the immune system but actually most of the action is happening in the lymph node and although people have looked at the lymph node in animals no one's done it in humans before after a vaccine. Taking a sample from a lymph node is in fact easier, less painful um, than a blood draw and that's most likely associated with the fact that you're taking a much smaller needle, that's part one, so it hurts much less. And two, you're doing this under an ultrasound guided, guided uh, procedure, which means you actually know where you're going. The, the best analogy to, looking at, to explain why we're looking at the lymph node is that if you lose your car keys at night and you only look for your car keys under the street light, you're going to have a chance of finding them there or not, but you possibly might have lost your car keys somewhere outside of the area that is illuminated by the street light. And by looking at the lymph node, we're actually looking beyond what has been looked at. And so we're really hoping this will give us unique insights into how the immune system is responding to vaccination. You capture all the signals in a very unbiased, agnostic way, really, and then pitch them against each other to find what the differences are that associate with your outcome. And the goal, really, for all of us right now, beyond the demonstration project, is to identify the rules of immunogenicity, meaning what does a vaccine actually have to induce or do in order to be protective after a single dose given to anybody, no matter what the age and no matter where in the world.